As I said, we shall bait Heindler's forces into conflict by building three lines of defense. However, these are not meant to stop Heindler's army from advancing. I want you to remember that these are intended to be broken through. We want them to discount Leonis's strength and attempt to penetrate our last line of defense. And that is when the other defense forces they thought they had broken through will launch a surprise attack on them from behind, all at once. Of course, this is just a ploy to disperse the enemy's fighting power by making them battle on all sides. Therefore, if the enemy counterattacks you, allow yourselves to be pushed back little by little. In this way, once the enemy's focus is detracted from the front, I shall summon forth visions to break through their lines. Then, I shall challenge Oberon to single combat. That said, it's likely our battle with Oberon shall test us in ways we cannot expect. And that is where our reinforcement shall come into play. Lumen, our division of mages, shall provide support by attacking from afar. That is enough of a recapitulation of our strategy. Now to assign commanders to each line of defense. Lilith shall be in charge of the first line. Leave it to me, my king. Camillo shall command the second line of defense. Huh? Me? Hide down. You make us look bad. <laughs> It seems Mont has finally acknowledged my superior abilities. Consider it done. I shall put an end to that Oberon guy before he can break through my line. You utter lackwit. Did you not even listen to the whole strategy explanation? Our role is to allow Oberon's forces through so we can perform a pincer maneuver on them. Quiet, you! I was just trying to show how pumped I am, okay? I have high expectations for you. And heading the third line of defense is Ramada. Everyone, move out! Ah, uh, just my luck that we'd be placed on the frontmost line. This is the most exhausting position on the whole damn battlefield. This kind of thing is pretty tough going for a guy my age. Enough of your grumbling. Try to consider our deployment to the front lines as a sign of the high hopes they have for us. Oh, to be as young as you again. To shine, still full of aspirations. For starters, we former members of the old Likaros army know hardly anything about Heinler. Oh, really? Oberon was the most pathetic princeling back when he was held hostage. From our perspective, his was just a small, insignificant kingdom under the protection of Rundal. And now, here they are. To think that Oberon would betray Jaden and make off with his ring, well... It's still so hard to believe. You know, this probably means the enemy is convinced you know more than you actually do. Oh. I bet that's why King Mon has great expectations for us. Huh. <laughs> I suppose that's one way of looking at it. But either way, it's not so bad having your leader put his trust in you. How about it then? Shall we give them hell before we give them ground? Yeah, let's earn our keep, and then some. Don't you think our line is looking a bit undermanned? What makes you say that? I mean, 
besides you and me, I don't see anyone else with much talent at all. Oh, I get it. What do you get, exactly? Mont contrived this so I wouldn't be able to show off my elite skills. Or just maybe he's hoping that this way I get killed in battle. That cunning little devil! Why, I'm on to him! Or maybe this way you have more of a chance to stand out as you notch up meritorious deeds. No. Hmm. I guess that is one way to look at it. All right then, I'll just have to show him what I've really got. Oberon, you jerk. Don't go running to mommy when you see the new and improved Camilo. This, Miss Ramada. About what, pray tell? It feels like you were assigned to babysit us. We're sure you could have achieved way more on the front line than back here with us. Are the three of you still unaware of your own prowess? Our own. prowess? Uh, what are you talking about? Why, you showed remarkable growth during the previous great battle. We did? There is no need to be modest. Think about it. We took on the combined forces of Heindler and Rundal, and proved ourselves an even match for them. Moreover... I guess Rundal's commander, Raldor, praised us as well, didn't he? It felt really good at the time, but thinking level-headed about it now, we've still got a long way to go. That is proof you possess the desire to improve and aim for new heights. Huh? There are those who, when praised, are driven to greater heights by their pride. Take Camillo, for instance. But there are also those, like you three, who think they still have room for improvement and continue to strive to better themselves. I'm not sure if you call what we do striving. If anything, it feels more like we're just doing everything we can to make sure we don't hold everyone else back. That is good enough motivation. However, is it not about time you each developed a little self-confidence? Uh, um... Confidence is what nurtures the desire to keep striving higher. I guess you're right. So long as we don't let it go too much to our heads. I'll strive to have confidence then. <laughs> That's the spirit. Your abilities shall prove effective against Heindler. Even the stars say so. A report, Your Highness. The unit we had lying in wait by the border of Ovis and Horn has come under attack. By whom? Leonis, my liege. There is no daunting that Mont. So, he has come to lend a hand in defending Ovis Castle? How are our own preparations? Almost complete, Your Highness. Very well. What is that commotion? has been far too long, hasn't it, Oberon? What brings you here? 
Why, I missed you. Do I need a better reason to come see you, my dear? Glacella and Rosaluna stand together to face the Realm Scourge. But its power is overwhelming. Unable to stop the onslaught, the forces of Wazette were all but crushed. That is when Gilgamesh appeared, with Stern and Seymour joining the battle at his side. But even then, the Realm Scourge could not be stopped. Eventually, it disappears, as if its hunger for carnage had been sated. Meanwhile, Mont and his companions arrive at Ova's castle. There, they carve three lines of defense to meet the invasion from Heimler. me, did you? That's right. King Oberon. There is no need for concern, Gernsback. Leave us. Yes, your highness. Should I take this as a sign that you don't completely hate me, then? Can you just tell me what it is you want? I already told you. I simply desired to see you. <sighs> You've changed. Seeing as you confiscated one ring from me, then claimed another from Jaden. Confiscated? If I recall correctly, you offered it to me. You would have had me killed had I not handed it over. We both know this. <laughs> Besides, Luciel entrusted that ring to me. So, you are here to demand I give it back. But I could make the same claim for keeping the ring. It is the only memento I have left of her, after all. Then let us make a deal. What kind of deal? If you merely hand Ova's castle to me, I shall not meddle in your affairs ever again. I don't think it is that bad an exchange. Ah, uh, so that is why you mentioned the ring. To sow the seeds of guilt within me? That has nothing to do with our deal. Come on, what do you say? What if I refuse? You really have changed. You were never the kind to talk like that before. I have not changed. I am merely doing my duty and uniting all of Ardra as I await the coming of the true King Jaden. And what if your true Jaden does not appear? <laughs> you have already surpassed Jaden. Gernsback and your other followers. Even I believe that to be true. Oberon. 
I'll give the Ovis matter due consideration. May I remain here at least until you have made your decision? Do as you please. But to be safe, I shall have guards assigned to you. That is your prerogative. After all, this is your castle now. <sighs> if you're heading off to Ovis, you might want to pay a visit to the places you and Luciel shared fond memories at. Today, we march to commence our invasion of Ovis. We just received word that Leonis has lent its forces to the defense of Ovis. However, that does not change our plans in the slightest. If we can lay hold of the ring that Leonis' King Mont carries, then we shall have nothing to ever fear. After we have seized the lands of Ovis, we shall use that as a base to attack Horn and speed up our unification of the whole of Ardra. Jeter, I leave the defense of this castle and the surveillance of Shalza in your hands. As you wish. Gernsback, you and Resnick shall accompany me. As you command, my king. Are you sure the two of us are the best choice, your highness? You have concerns? No, Your Majesty. It is just that in war there are no absolutes, so... I understand what you are trying to say. However... Isaac and Effinger set out to search for Elia a short while ago. Then what about more? She has left Hindler. Then... The rumors were true. She made it known to me at her parting. But Moore told me her objective was the destruction of Rundal. Now that that has been achieved, she wants to live out a peaceful life back in her homeland. I can barely believe it. I do not wish to force people to fight for us. After we have taken Ovis, I shall have to select a new member of the Six Fangs. That is all from me. Let us now set off for Ovis! Show no complacency, and fight with all your might! I'll fight to the Expect end. Expect no mercy. I will fight until the very end. Stay strong. <laughs>
Stop the carriage! Is something the matter, Your Highness? I just wish to breathe some fresh air. Understood, Your Highness. At ease, Gern's back. As you command. I shall take a quick walk. Have the men rest. King Oberon. You must not head off unattended. We are already in Ova's territory. Then, perhaps you can accompany me. Yes, Your Highness. You all get some rest here while you can. What is this village? Uh, this brings back fond memories. This was my, uh, or should I say, our special place. You mean yours and Lady Luciel's? That is correct. It was just the once, but the villagers allowed Luciel and I to rest up here. It must have been a couple of years before we invaded Ovis alongside Rundal. We used to both come, unattended, to the nearby meadows, where we would lie down and discuss our plans for the future. But on that day, it was exceptionally hot and the dry southerlies caused Luciel to feel unwell. It was then that the people from this village extended us a helping hand. They were good people. They paid us reverence and even celebrated our visiting them. We were so touched by their hospitality that Luciel and I made a promise. That we should both come back and visit this village again once Heindler and Ovis were united. To see the village still prospering like this today warms my heart indeed. It seems as though one of the villagers has noticed us. He might know something. Please, stay here a moment.
You have suffered incessant feuding with the neighboring villages, you say? Tell me more about that. Well, uh, you see... Speak your mind. This land used to be plagued by droughts, so we could hardly raise proper crops, you see. It was so bad a good number of us starved to death. So then we petitioned Lady Luciel, you see. Asked if we could draw water from the Moluar River that flows to the north of us for our fields. And did Luciel hear your petition? That she did. Told us we had been kind to her that day she and you stopped by here, and that it was the least she could do. But then... What happened? They went and diverted all the water from the Moloar River to our village. All the water, you say? Good gods. Thanks to that, we no longer suffered water shortages. But now the other villages do instead. That'd be right. So, that is the reason conflicts between you and the neighboring villages have increased. My king... The ones tasked with managing the river's water must have simply misunderstood Luciel's intention. But it pains me to know that the village we had so fond memories of should be caught up in such a sorry state of affairs. When this battle is over, I shall see to it that the waters are shared fairly between each of the nearby villages. You mean that, Your Majesty, sir? You shall all have to be patient a short while longer, though. Why, thank you kindly. Let us return to the carriage. As you command.
いくぞ遠慮はしない。無理はするな。My friends, I'll fight. We should be there. I'm ready. I will fight until the very end. What if I'm so close? どうしてもやる？元気出てきた？ Let me help you. Of course.
当然の結果だ So, the Crystal Sanctum is just going to sit back and watch? War is on the verge of breaking out between Ovis and Heindler. And all the while, the founder of the Sanctum chooses to immerse himself in his own personal research. After Rondal was defeated, wasn't the plan to use Luciel in order to win over Oberon, take their rings and then annihilate Heindler? At least that's what I heard from Suddenly. Did I mishear? Was it my imagination? My ears playing tricks on me? No, no, and no. Why, I find myself at a loss knowing I took part in his silly daydream to bring his dead mistress back to life. I am not one to shy away from singing my own praises, so I shall tell you straight. I am the greatest artilleryman in all of Ardra. Did you get that? It is important, so I shall say it again. I am the greatest artilleryman in all of Ardra. There is a vast multitude of people wishing to hire my services. A veritable line of potential employers. Do you understand? I am a coward to the bottom of my bones, but here I am, chomping at the bit to take part in heated warfare. And yet, I seem to be on the only side that isn't satisfying my needs. Is that all you wish to say? Yes, I believe it is. So, is my passionate temperament clear to you now? I suppose it would be going too far if I said that I would rather die than live a boring life. Yet I am well on my way to reaching that state of mind. And that is a fact. Hmm. How about we leave Soderly to his experiments and the rest of us go attack Heindler to lighten the mood? Well, how about it? Be a good sport. If we don't do something, then the Crystal Sanctum will go to waste. You talk too much. If you find yourself at a loss with all your free time, then I have an assignment for you. Oh, goody! Let us hear it. I want you to keep Luciel company. 
No, absolutely not. If that is your answer, then I will have you leave the Sanctum immediately. It is not appropriate for a man with only his own self-interests at heart to remain in such a sacred place as this. Only my own self-interests? You seem to be greatly mistaken, my dear. Why do you think I constantly go beyond the call of duty for you, or worry so much about the future of the Sanctum? Now that Kuri is dead, I shall gladly speak ill of him. But I served even him and his crazed pursuits with my full loyalty. It never even crossed my mind to dare take over with that. The same goes for the Crystal Sanctum. I aim not to rule myself, but to be an absolute ruler's right-hand man. I would like for nothing more than a great king, one regarded with awe by all, to look into my eyes and tell me they could not have claimed supreme rulership if it were not for my help. Why, I'd be so happy I'd probably wet myself with excitement. In other words, I desire to be the Kingmaker. Yes, Kingmaker. What a most pleasant and delectable ring that word has. So that is what you want then? Indeed, more than anything. So you can see I am far off only having my own self-interest at heart. I am a rare breed, if I do say so myself. Besides, if you are going to talk of men with only their own self-interests at heart, then the first person that comes to mind is none other than His Holiness. Why, he is selfishness incarnate. Would you not agree? <sighs> oh. Does that make you angry? How oddly surprising. Why would that surprise you? Suddenly himself told me that you are nothing more than a puppet, devoid of any emotion. I do not argue this. How sad to not be loved by one's own creator, one's own father. His Holiness shall unify his followers and guide them to eternity. I am but a tool to help accomplish that. And in this, I have never felt discontent. Not even once. Then let me ask you this. Did not the great Lord Sadly use his precious followers as nothing more than disposable human shields in that war we just fought? You cannot deny it. I was there, and these eyes of mine never miss a thing. <sighs> it was not an act of desperation, was it? No. He built up his base of followers fully intent on using them as discardable pawns from the very beginning. You are wrong. You know I'm not. Surely you grow aware of what is to come. That he not only intends to abandon his believers, but even Ardra as well. Oh? So you wish to go a few rounds with me now, do you? What an interesting prospect. Show me then. Show me the metal Sadali's current right hand has to offer. I shall crush them.
遠慮はしない<笑>我こそ古代史の滅びの始まりだどうしてもやる頑張って行こう I'll fight to the end of the mercy I will fight until the very end <laughs>
Oof. You certainly mean business, don't you? <sighs> but does that not prove you are more than a mere tool? You have emotions budding within you. <laughs> Do not look so grim. Listen here and listen well. As I told you before, the Crystal Sanctum shall go to waste if something is not done. If you truly care about the Sanctum and its believers, then follow those emotions of yours. There are many who would gladly fill the place Sadali is leaving behind. Those remnants of Lycaros, the people of Izog, starting with their garvel fellow. None of them, however, are of the caliber I wish to serve. If low life such as them were to come to control the Sanctum, then I would promptly wish you all adieu. I believe I have said all I need to say on the matter. The rest is in your hands. Do nothing and die a miserable death serving His Holiness, or take over the leadership of the Crystal Sanctum in order to ensure its survival. Oh, and as for keeping Luciel company, all right, I shall do as you wish. Just remember what kind of man you deal with. You might come to regret it later. Thank you.